Welcome back to the Bell House Exorcism. This is your ghost, the host of the most, Shanna. I'm ready to get spoopy this week. And you are? Pukwa PJ. Oh, I thought you were going to say a ghost has no I know, I was thinking, I was thinking about that. I need a new name. So before we get started this week, I would like to first give a shout out to Maggie's Casket LLC. Yes. Last night, we had the joy of doing a spooky paint and sip with Laura and Ray um, with Maggie's casket. She rocked it. It was so much fun. I think we should post the pictures of our cats and see who has the better of the paintings, you or me. Absolutely. One of our kids voted correctly. And one of them voted correctly for me. (laughs) (laughs) We didn't have Alex do tiebreaker. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to Craven and Caster Creations and Curiosities because that was the business that hosted Maggie's Caskets mm-hmm. uh, Paint and Sip. It is an amazing. <laughs> they're like everything that we like. Yes, it's, it's great. Everything wonderful. Um, so it was lots of fun to be there. They have an awesome shop. It has spooky ghost stuff. It has board stuff. game stuff, D and D stuff. They have like board game nights there. <laughs> They have some really cool, like, witchy stuff and occult stuff. I did not buy any occult stuff, obviously. Yeah. But if that is your jam, you got to go there. And this is all in Blakely, PA, so it's right above Scranton. I guess you want to put it in. That area. It was yeah. Bury, Scranton area. So it was really fun to be there. Um, there's also a dragon. So oh, yeah. It's a bearded dragon, right? It's a bearded dragon. Yeah. And it was a girl. Yep. Can be girl dragons. Uh, so, no, we had a lot of fun there last night. So, thank you guys so much for rocking it. Um, looking forward to doing more paint and sips because I want to one up you once again. Anything you want to add? I'm not sure about the once again <laughs> there. But also, uh, don't forget this coming Saturday, the 19th, we will be at Helix Tabletop Gaming Guild in Bloomsburg. Pennsylvania. Oh yeah. From eleven o'clock until six. Yeah, for me, I'll be there till six. Yeah, Shane will be here t- there till six. Uh, the rest of the games overboard cast will be there um, till close at eleven. Yeah, till eleven or whenever they get rid of us. Yep. <laughs> um, because PJ and Dan and Angie and mm-hmm. if I have time, will be showing how to play in different kinds of games because it's a tabletop boarding a- uh, board area yeah we'll go with tabletop boarding is that correct gaming sure gaming that makes more sense than tabletop boarding <laughs> uh, sounds close to waterboarding i'm like oh, that's not correct <laughs> um so we're gonna be showing different kinds of games there and i will have a table set up for wellhouse exorcism too so if you want to come tell me some spoopy ghost stories i would love to have you featured on our show mm-hmm. um so we do have our our couple weeks set up for us we are doing eastern state this coming week can't wait. Yep. This first week, we have um, personal stories from two of our listeners and um, a little bit of the background on Eastern State. And then the week after, we'll have Jackie talking about the medical side of everything and the spoopy stuff. Woo-hoo. Oh, yeah. So it's all figured out. Um, so looking forward to hearing uh, some of Carrie's stories and some of Megan's stories, actually. I can't wait to just dig back into some of the spooky stories that are there too. Oh, and we're going live on location tomorrow too. Yeah. Well, I don't know about live, but I'll be recording. Well, we will be alive there. We'll be so alive. We'll be alive and on location. How's that? <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to be recording a lot. So we'll uh, edit it together a little video and post it to YouTube too. Will we? Yeah. Yes, we will. And Laura and Ray are going to be there. Yep. They're always behind the scenes helping with Well House, even if they're not on the show. Laura and Ray, if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> you need to get your butts back over here. All right, anyway, so this week we are discussing the curse of Reuben Rock. Thank you. I was going to go like that. (laughs) (laughs) So this is an actual story. I did a lot of research into it just to make sure I wasn't telling like a fake curse. Now, first off, it's coming from the book Cursed in PA, Stories of the Damned in the Keystone State by our favorite Mark Nesbitt. And Mm -hmm. Patty A. Wilson. Um, So a lot of things were mentioned in the story. And so I actually took notes like, okay, was there really a Reuben Rock? Yes, there was. Um, So I have been random. See if he is real. (laughs) So my first thing, (laughs) yes, he was. And he died. Um, See if Altoona newspaper is real. Yes, it's called the Altoona Mirror. So this was actually in the newspaper at the time period twice. Um, So this is like legit. And um, it deals with North African voodoo 
and powwow doctoring to stop voodoo curses. <laughs> so a lot of things we've kind of been discussing for the past couple months all comes together. But yeah, this is all legit. So instead of me going to multiple locations to find information, I'm just going to use the book. And then I do have the articles. I have quotes from the articles. Um, mm-hmm. So this is legit, people. This is real. This is a real curse. I'm ready. All right. So first off, PJ, I want to take you back. It's World War II era. Okay. Okay. So we are. So it's World War II era, and it is Claysburg, PA. All right. Okay. You got in your head? I'm ready. All right. 1940s. All right. So prior to World War II, Rosella Dively and Reuben Rock fell madly in love. And yes, it's Reuben and Rosella, RR. It's great. Um, obviously, they're meant to be together because their names are so adorable. So they have this beautiful romance. They fall madly in love. And then he, being good American boy, he feels the call to go fight for his nation, obviously. So they do what everyone else did. They marry very quickly, and then he's off to war. It's a very common story that you hear um, from back then. So she stays with her parents, obviously, while he is fighting. He is over there for nearly four years. All right. So this guy is like long term. Yeah. He went right at the beginning because, you know, we had the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 41 and then off we go. Right. Yep. Um, So, yeah, we have the bombing happen and then he wants to go and fight. Now, he is not stationed on the Western Front. He is not stationed on the Eastern Front. He is stationed in North Africa, where we have the whole Erwin Rummel and the Germans going mm-hmm, on. Mm-hmm. Now, um, we had learned a little bit about North Africa because of my dad, because the Hellcats fought in every area yep. of the war. So we knew a little bit about North Africa. Um, so there were some really crazy skirmishes, and there was nothing. Some really yep. crazy skirmishes. My favorite North long African nothing. story is the inflatable army that we had. On the coast of Northern Africa. What was the inflatable army? We had like inflatable tanks and tents and things like that to make oh, it yeah, look that's like, right. from, yeah. you know, yeah. so aerial spy planes would see this big army from the sky. Yep. And it was all just balloons and stuff. And so that's why storming Normandy was easier than it could have been because a lot of the troops were south. And so <laughs> we were able to invade from the north. I wanted to say invading Normandy like that was easier. E- easier. Not I easy. know. Easier. Oh, just the thought of that fight. Yeah. Thank goodness for our strong men. All right. So he is in North Africa. And like I said, it is some crazy desperate fighting. And then it's nothing. <laughs> like back and forth for four years. So him being bored and having a lot of downtime, he decides to visit the locals. Because why not? You know? Um, so he decides to kind of walk around and meet some people. And he becomes really, really intrigued um, with their culture. Um, especially their native magic. Hmm. So, yes, he does make some good friends there, but uh, gets into some bad stuff, too. Uh, so I have written down here, um, but th- there's a note from the book. It says, perhaps nothing interested him more than the voodoo doctors. Their exotic rituals and elaborate costumes and ceremonies drew him in. He began learning all he could and participated in rituals as he learned more. So not only was he interested... He starts practicing. He was all up in it. All up in that business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so, yeah, I just, that is important as the background for this entire curse. Because if you're learning some voodoo, you're, you're going to know how to do some curses. Yeah. Hey, who do does the voodoo that you do? Uh, so, anyway, he does, unfortunately, fall victim to war. I was going to say you're going to get get into deep doo-doo. Oh, my Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, he his entire group is attacked by uh, the Germans, and they are gassed. And as you know, the gas isn't fun. Mm-hmm. So it destroys his lungs. Like, yeah. just absolutely disgusting uh, what happens to his lungs. So I want to read what it says on the book here just because it puts in context like what he went through. It says... He suffered a severe gassing from the German forces. He was carried from the battlefield to a makeshift hospital, and from there he received more formal care, but his lungs were badly damaged. Breathing hurt, and air wheezed and rasped in his scorched lungs. He could not draw a full breath, and in 1946 he was discharged from the service. He returned home to his Rosella, and they began life together. But of course his life is completely disrupted. Yeah. 
Can you imagine like being there till 46 and finally he's discharged? He, so he goes back home and he tries to have a great life with Rosella. Um, he's going to try and build a house. However, it's kind of hard when you have Can't very, breathe. <laughs> very limited lung capacity. Um, so it, it is said that he did start building a cottage for them and he had the outer frame done and he got a couple of rooms done, but then he like, like collapses. Like, that's it. And so from then on, unfortunately, um, Ro Rosella has to become his nurse and the moneymaker. You know, she's mm -hmm. his wife. She's the homebody. Kind of she's taking care of the house and home. She's his nurse. And she's trying to make money wherever she can. It's also the 40s. There aren't many jobs available for a woman who was yeah. planning on being a housewife and who was now married, especially. Um, and by yeah, the way, during she... the war, there were lots, but. Yes, it's post-war. Yeah, post-war. Yeah. So um, she can't find... So family and friends try to help them out, you know, but what what can you do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so he knows that life isn't so good, and he knows he's going to be dying soon. Um, so during that time, he tries to tell her all about his time in North Africa and the voodoo that he <laughs> got interested in. You gotta hear about this. You gotta hear about the cool stuff that I did. I yeah. saw this guy make a zombie. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so Rosella is absolutely horrified by all of this. And she actually like gets really, really mad to the point where she's like, you need to go talk to a priest. Are there zombie talks in here? Did he see a zombie? No. Oh. Spoiler alert. I mean, it's not in here. Maybe he did. Okay. But this is Mark Nesbitt telling his story. So okay. I'm sorry. But there are I things. Think that, I think that's a voodoo. I don't think it's hoodoo. I'm pretty sure it's voodoo. Well, we... it's all, practice of making zombies. Penny, I know you're listening. <laughs> you got the hoodoo magic book, so I want you to read through there. Uh, but I want to take out of the book again because this, again, the way it's worded, Mark Nesbitt and Pat Patsy Wilson—they do a great job. So it says he began to talk about the voodoo and the rituals he had participated in, but Rosella grew upset about it. She was shocked about his view of voodoo and horrified that he was messing with what she believed was witchcraft. He took down a metal box that he had brought back from the war and told her that she should never touch it. Like, like I have this box. Look at it. Don't touch this. Like, it's <laughs> so ridiculous. And but then it says, Rosella was fine with that because she wanted nothing to do with the voodoo and whatever was in the box. Good for her. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he has a metal box full of things that he did while he was over there. Um, now, again, there's no zombie in the small metal box, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there was a voodoo doll, but there is other stuff because of what transpires later. So, anyway, he again, he knows he's dying, so he tries to tell her about this, and she's not interested. She's like, y'all, you got to go talk to a minister because this is – you should go get your soul, soul expunged. Um, but he does say, like, in the final weeks of his life – he tells her how he wants to be buried, how he wants to go, that kind of thing, and what he wants done for his funeral. Now, because of what had happened, he very much blamed the military and the war for how his life turned out. Now, I don't know much about uh, if he got a pension. I mean, he was in the art. He was over there fighting for four years. He, I hope he got a pension. I know, right? But it says he's penniless, so I don't know. Um, but he is just so mad. He blamed, um, the war and fighting, of course, but the military's, uh, negligence of taking care of their soldiers as to why their lives were so terrible at this point. So he told her, Rosella, I do not want to have a military funeral. You are going to bury me normally. I'd be pretty resentful too. Yeah. So he's like, Has that uniform gone. I do not want it on my body when I die. Um, so he ends up catching pneumonia. You know, and that's how he knows, like, this is it. Because his, his lungs are already shot and he gets pneumonia. Of yeah. course, he's going to... Oh, maybe it's tuberculosis. I lied. Um, but he ends up passing away. Okay? Yeah. Uh, now, with that being said, he, he makes her promise. And she's like, I promise. But also, you got to talk to a minister and get yourself forgiven for all the voodoo stuff you've been doing. <laughs> so he does. <laughs> he, he talks to a minister about what he had done. Um, he he gets forgiveness, you know. So he's not Catholic, so we would go to confession. But yeah. um, that all happens. So she says, yes, I will make sure to bury you normally. Your funeral will not be military. But how do you pay for your funeral when you have $0 yeah. in your budget? So for her, she is very, very stressed. So he dies on January 13th, 1949. Mm. Yes. My birthday is the 12th, listeners. So I was like, hey, that's my, almost my birthday. It's close. But, you know, he came home and he was alive for three years before he does pass away. 
So they did have three years together, but it was rife with, you know, no money and, you know, him, his fading health. So he passes away. Rosella quickly realizes that she can't afford the funeral. Yeah. <laughs> Zero dollars. So the American Legion post actually kind of hops in and they offer to help pay, but they have one requirement. What do you think it is? A uniform. Who would have thought? Yeah. Um, so, again, out of the book, I like the wording. So it says, however, um, since uh, Reuben had not provided any alternative to pay for the funeral, in the end, she pressed Reuben's uniform and instructed the undertaker to dress Reuben in it. American Legion Post 522 arranged the rest of the details. Rosella consoled herself by telling herself that Reuben deserved a military funeral. His sacrifice was just as significant and his death as related to the war as those shot down in the heat of battle. Now... I just want to say she was left with no choice unless you want her to like dig a hole in the back lawn yeah. in Clay's in Pennsylvania in January. There's no way you're going <laughs> to dig a hole in the ground in January, especially if you're a 22 year old female, you know, it, that, that ground is frozen. So that is the background. So she buries him. Mm-hmm. But this story is called the curse of Ruben rock. And this is a spooky podcast. So I flip my page over there. Oh my. As you can see, this, no, our listeners can't see, is all the haunting compared to the that's history. Some, some spooky stuff. It's some spooky stuff that's coming your way, people. So I know you listened to the Lizard Man last week. We got some spooky stuff going on in this story here. Although, Are you insinuating last week was spooky? <laughs> I'm saying it wasn't spooky. This is what you've been waiting for. <laughs> I think it was spooky in that we actually got along <laughs> the whole time. Oh, I love you. All right. <laughs> Now, this all begins immediately. Cause so, again, he dies when? January 13th is when he dies, okay? And he's buried. Immediately? Immediately, yes. So, almost immediately. Rose... Almost immediately? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Rosella starts to kind of fade away. Like, her family is very... Now, they're worried because, obviously, she's lost her husband. So, you have that normal sadness. But it, she starts looking really like. Just, I just had the image of like, you know, them putting like the last put, you know, like buttoning the last button on his uniform as they're dressing him, and then immediately like they get slapped on the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, immediately! I said no, <laughs> uh, no. I, I'd be kind of cool, but no. <laughs> so she goes back to their cottage. She, she lives there, even though her parents are like, "Why don't you come live here?" Because that house isn't finished. There's only like two rooms that are finished. And it's going to make you sad to be there because you've lost your husband. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, they begin to worry because she almost immediately starts fading away. She is getting thinner and thinner and she doesn't have the need or compulsion to eat. And if she does try to eat, she starts feeling really, really sick. So, Um, yeah, it's it's almost like something stopping her from actually ingesting food. And then she begins to complain that she can't sleep. And it's not insomnia. It's like creepy stuff. Stephen King made a novel about this. Yes, it was called Thinner. Yeah. Um, he wrote it after this, maybe. Also <laughs> about a curse from, I even want to say it was Voodoo Witch. I haven't read it. I only read the back of the book. I have it upstairs, but. Oh, boy. Anyway, you mean Thinner? Thinner, yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny because funny that's a pretty thin book, too. It is. It's a short story. Ironically, considering all of his books are long. So it's Thinner. <laughs> um, it's Anyway, moving on. (laughs) So the reason she can't sleep, though, she tells her family that she is hearing something on the roof at night, which is creepy enough. Yeah. Now, there is a there's a whole story above her. Okay, so she's hearing something on the roof, which is like, you know, above Mm -hmm. that. But she also says she can hear Reuben walking around upstairs. Like above her Mm -hmm. in the unfinished rooms. And so. You know, what? what's interesting about this is if we were to tell this to your parents, they would not immediately believe us, right? Because mm-hmm. it took a while for us to, like, actually get them to believe uh, our house was having some stuff yeah. on. So she tells her mom. Her mom does believe-ish her. She thinks that Rosella's sanity is kind of slipping because she's lost her husband. Mm-hmm. But she's intrigued because what Rosella is saying is very specific. And then, as she kind of, like, visits the cottage and goes and rummages through some stuff, she finds some voodoo stuff. And she's like, oh, my, my. 
this may be like a real thing. Like, cause so n- there was never time that she didn't like believe, not like didn't yeah. not believe her, her daughter. But in the book, it says the books and papers related to African witchcraft and voodoo obviously scared her, and, but interested, uh, interested Reuben. Mm-hmm. They were chilling for the poor woman, woman as she shuffled through them. However, the truly terrifying materials in the metal box were hidden and Rosella kept her husband's secret. So again, she finds all these books and stuff. But the metal box is hidden, and Rosella does not tell her mom about that because mm-hmm. she was told never touch it. Yep. And she go and listen to her husband. So mom is like, all right, you got to get out of this house. Like, obviously. You didn't tell me he do do the voodoo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and so um, things do get worse. There's more stomping and whatnot. So Rosella. <laughs> He's gone from walking to stomping. <laughs> Um, so he's she, skipping today. It's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> so she does go home. Um, but it doesn't get any better when she gets there. Now, while she doesn't hear any thumping upstairs at her parents' house, she still is wasting away. Um, she can't, still can't eat. She mm-hmm. can't sleep. She, um, looks tired all the time. She's very listless. So again, she is even more faded. There's like something like, like pulling away her life force is like how mm-hmm. it's described in the articles. And she loses even more weight. So she's even more thin. She's thinner, I would say. Wow. It's PJ. All right. <laughs> After all that, she's like, you know what, mom? I've been holding back on something here. You found those books on voodoo. But there's more doo-doo at my house here. Um, there's a metal box. So she tells mom about the metal box and um, off her family goes to get the box. Um, brother brings it back and her mom looks through it. And this is what I like. This is, this is like word for word. I'm taking it out of the book. This is put in newspaper article too. So like this okay. is, yeah. So imagine this happens. It Even, chomped on her. Like no, it's a not mimic. a mimic. <laughs> it's not a mimic. And there's no zombies, but... All right, so Rosella's mother opened the box and tumbled the contents onto the table. An old picture of Rosella fell out. Attached to it was a rabbit's foot. The picture okay. was in a wooden frame. So far, it sounds nice, rabbit's foot. Mm-hmm. That's... Mrs. Dively took the picture out of the frame, and to everyone's surprise and horror, the picture frame suddenly began to move on its own. It crawled in Mrs. Dively's hands, and when she dropped the frame, it slithered across the table toward Rosella. Mrs. Dively grabbed the frame and burned it in the fire while the family prayed. She was convinced that Reuben had somehow cursed Rosella or had been cursed by what he had dabbled in while in Africa. By burning the picture frame, she thought the curse surely had to be lifted. Can you imagine that happening? That's freaky. Ugh. I don't like that at all. Yo, um, and you know, like usually I'm like, oh, that can't be true. Then I'm like, oh, well, look at our house. So yeah, take your daughter's picture out of the frame, and then bam, it wiggles around like a snake. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. No, thank you. All right. So a- after that, um, the story is picked up by the Altoona Mirror because they hear about this, and there are enough people who witness the frame moving that like this becomes a thing. And so I actually have a quote from the uh, newspaper because Rosella did not want to talk to the newspaper people, but her mom did. So Mm -hmm. this is actually a quote from her mom. Her mom says, Rosella began worrying about the picture of her that Reuben had carried. He was saved in the end, but he had books and things in his house. Rosella was just crazy to be with him. She would probably go back to him at any time. That's probably how he did it, by charming her picture that he always carried with him. After he died, Rosie just started wasting away. And so the idea is, like, there was a kind of a, a an innuendo that maybe he wanted her to die so they could be together in the afterlife. Or the curse was because of the uniform. I'm going yeah. with the uniform yeah. because of the later part of the story. But, yeah, that her mom was just like, oh, Rosie was in love with him and she'd always follow him. So I think he's trying to kill her because, you know. Because mom hadn't really put two together with the whole, like, uniform thing yet. She yeah. thinks it's just there was the picture, the frame, and now we've, we've saved her. The rabbit's foot's interesting, though, because that's not like a voodoo thing. I don't know. Yeah. You know I think of it as like that's rabbit's a witch, foot. That's a witchcraft thing. Well, this is African stuff. I don't know. They do something different in North Africa. Do you know I, what a rabbit's foot is? Like, what it symbolizes? It's a rabbit's foot, and it's disgusting. And it shows up a lot in the movie The Witch that you hate. Oh. 
is that um, the belief used to be that witches could turn into rabbits. And so if you chopped off a rabbit's foot, then that means that you prevented a witch from turning back into a human Unless, you know, there's a one-legged woman hopping around town. And then you know who the witch <laughs> or is. Or she's missing a hand. <laughs> <laughs> but then you know who the witch is. So that's why it's a lucky wa- rabbit's foot. Oh, lucky rabbit's foot? Rabbit's foot. <laughs> the rabbit <laughs> hunting. We've been playing too much uh, with Alex today. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. That's, that's good. Well, okay. Yeah, that's why it's lucky because you saved yeah. you, that poor bunny. I know, right? I should go check out uh, the grab one of those jackrabbits down in Texas. <laughs> we'll see then. So, Rabbit's leg you. right there. It's huge. <laughs> huge leg. Um, so after that, after the burning of the frame and the prayers and the family, um, Rosella does seem to do better. All right. So it's been a mm-hmm. little while. A couple of days after this, she decides to go back home. And everyone's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, listen. No. Stay here. And she's like, no, I want to go back to where I was. And I miss Ruben. I want to be closer to my, my husband who's gone. All right, fine. The first few nights back... Things are happening again. Okay. So she starts hearing thuds on the roof. Uh, So to quote the text, it says, She heard slight thuds on the roof and other sounds, but they were faint and distant, and she told herself that it was just the house settling in because it had been left cold for a few weeks. Hmm. No, honey. I mean, wood does swell and everything when it heats and chills. You in danger, girl, you best run. Yeah, but that's a whole different sound than walking. (laughs) And it doesn't matter if she runs anyway, uh, based on this, because it, it it's mad now. Well, it's a curse on her. It's not on the land. Yeah. Well, and it's mad now because they burned the frame, right? Wow. So uh, it's going to get worse. So after the first few nights of distant sounds, it happens right there in her bedroom. She starts hearing knocking on the bedroom ceiling. Oh. Yeah. So it's no longer above her, not on the roof. No, it is in that room. And so her being any female in any movie she decides to go investigate the sounds i mean we've done it too. i know everyone you does. can't you can't like make fun of it because it's what you do well it's funny because i um was just watching ncis and uh they were on an episode where they're talking about people going to investigate and the one guy is just like well denoza goes well would you go and investigate kate and she goes um i sleep with a gun under my pillow I'm going to go investigate. <laughs> they, uh, I was just watching The Wire this morning and they do the same thing in that where like there's, there's this hitman man. He taps on the glass and he's like, naturally, she had to come to the window to see what was tapping on the glass. And, you know, yeah. that's uh, what we do. We are. We're, we're curious like cats. But the pounding on the, the ceiling, it sounded like a man thumping his fist. So like that's why she's like, well, I want to yeah. go see Ruben, you know, so she decides she's going to go check it out. Um, so she goes upstairs, um, she grabs a little lamp, right? And she heads on up. When she goes up there, there's no one there. No surprise. Mm-hmm. But you can still hear the pounding. So something's making the noise. So then she, um, hurries back downstairs because obviously that kind of spooks her out. Who would have mm-hmm. thought? And when she looks out the window on the way back downstairs, she sees a familiar face in the window. Reuben. And it's not the a sandwich. Yes, she got very hungry. It was midnight snack. Uh, <laughs> um, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> who would have known? <laughs> the original Rock. Uh, so she, and you think maybe it's just like a play of the lamp because she's holding that. Maybe she's, you know, you're, what's what's the word? Like when you're already, per, you're thinking, what's that? Like you, what's that word? We used it before with Kyle when he was on. You are like, you are imagining it's going to happen because you're priming yourself. Yeah, like priming. yeah. Um, so could it have been that? No, because she moves the line by the way, and it's still him and he doesn't go mm. away. Uh, so that, that right there kind of freaks me. And it says that he was, uh, she actually walks closer and, um, it says he is glaring at her. And so she decides to hide in, um, a chair. Like she kind of like cowers in a chair in, uh, until morning, but she continually hears the footsteps upstairs and she would see Ruben's face in the window periodically, but she wouldn't make like eye contact. She put her head yeah. back down. So that is going on until the when the light the light comes up, like the sun comes up. So that's going on. Well, of course she goes home. It'd be like Thank the goodness. longest night ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she goes running back home to her parents and tells them. Of course they believe her. So again, I like that they believe her and they don't like shoot her down. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's all the whole, the whole picture thing, too. So <laughs> yeah. they're already, like, prepared for this. We told you not to go there. Like, <laughs> seriously. 
Um, so anyway, it does say here, so because this is the next thing. She goes home. She tells them. Still, after all that, what do you think Rosella does? Goes back to that. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah. So it says, still, all that Rosella had now was the house, and she had to go back. Now, I act, I under, underline that because we feel that. Mm-hmm. Like, this is our house. You know, we didn't, we couldn't afford to leave. But same thing for her. Do you want to live with your parents as a spinster, yeah. or do you want to live in your own home? Yeah. You know, so I get it. You, you want to take control of your house. Yeah. But it says her sister accompanied her home that night, and they had a very tense dinner together. <laughs> then they climbed into bed together and fell asleep. <laughs> I am not ready for this. (laughs) So they go to bed together because now she's going to have a witness there in case anything happens. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously something happens with her sister there. Almost immediately they fall asleep. Then they both wake up to a thunk, the thunk, the thunk, the thunk. And so her sister grabs her hand and says, I heard that too. Right. And so um, there's pounding on the roof. The girls get out of bed. They try to go check everything out to see if there's someone on the roof playing a trick. There's no one up there. But it says here, as the sister ran for the door that Rosella held open, she suddenly caught a glimpse of Reuben watching her from the side of the house. So no longer is it his face in a window. He is outside the house. Wow. So he's not a zombie. Okay. But... He's like not, full body, though. Yeah. Which is so, rare for yeah. full body apparition. He angry, by the way. Girl, <laughs> you in danger. You best be running all the way home. So there is no doubt it was Ruben. She could tell it was him. And again, he is glaring at her, too. And then he disappears. So <laughs> um, inside the house, of course, the girls talk. They're like, yeah, yeah, definitely. saw him. It was definitely him. But what's really sad is um, this is where Rosella, like, actually says, like, I think he cursed me. Because of the uniform. Like, she mm-hmm. recognizes he's angry because I did not follow his word. And yeah. he's come back now to haunt me because I gave him in his funeral what he did not want. Mm-hmm. So, now, each night, Rosella suffers from a terrible, horrible haunting. Her brother tries staying. Doesn't help. She tries going home. But that doesn't work either. As the text says... Each night, Rosella suffered the terrible haunting. She had a brother stay with her. She finally returned to her parents' home, but even there, they saw they, not just her, they saw Reuben and heard the pounding and thuds of someone on the roof or beating against the outside of the house. Her father and brothers patrolled the property, but they never found anyone living. However, they did see Reuben. He went wherever Rosella went, and he haunted her and he hounded her. So, honey, um... (laughs) It's okay for you to go on to the afterlife and not haunt me. All right. It would just be me being like, hey, okay. what you doing? <laughs> oh, no. It would be worse. I can say you tell me dad jokes. Yeah, I was, I'd do that too. Mm. Or I'd just narrate everything. <laughs> okay, I love you too. So Shanna he... cringed at the thought of it. Oh, stop. <laughs> she put her head in her hands. I did. I felt it. She All rubs right. her eyes. So. <laughs> and gives an exasperated look across the table. <laughs> this is supposed to be spoopy. Um, and again, I give kudos to the mom because, you know, Rosella says, I think it's because of the uniform. And mom says, you know what? You're right. You son of a gun I'm in. And <laughs> so <laughs> she's like, we got to figure out how to stop the curse. Right. And that's when she remembers something very specific about the metal box, because she's the one who had gone through it, not mm-hmm. Rosella. Rosella followed the rules. She didn't really touch the box, but everyone else did. Um, at the bottom of all that stuff, there were pamphlets and stuff. And so she actually finds a brochure at the very bottom of the box for a local powwow doctor hmm. who is known to, as it says in the book, um, his track stated that he faced the powers of darkness and that courage was exactly what Mrs. Dively thought was needed uh, because it says that he, uh, so first off, his name was Edward Culp Ferguson, his power doctor who was also a gospel worker and a healer. So she figured if anybody can stop this, the powwow doctor can. Mm -hmm. We've already had lots of conversations and it's no surprise that in 1949, there is a powwow doctor working in rural On call nearby. (laughs) On call. The fact that it's inside the metal box is interesting, but I think it's because of... Actually, you know what? Let's stop and take a pause there. Why would a guy who is interested in voodoo and making curses, why would he have a pamphlet for a powwow doctor? 
I think just <laughs> once you start going down that rabbit hole, you want to investigate all the different okay. branches and outlets of it. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? Because I feel like he would know the power doctor could stop him. So he's got to know all about this power doctor. Apart, perhaps. Investigating the competition. Yeah. I don't know. So she decides that this is the just the guy for them. So they get him on the case. And, you know, he never once thought that it wasn't true. You know, again, he's a power doctor. He believes. And he just tells him, listen, there is only way, one way to stop this. What do you think it is, PJ? To fix the burial? Yeah. Got to get rid of that uniform. <laughs> May I remind you, it is 1949. And Ruben's been buried. Mm-hmm. That's cool. It's going to be great. Yeah. That's uh, fine. <laughs> yeah. So he says, we need to exhume Ruben's body, get the uniform off him, cleanse his body, and rebury him the way that he wanted to be buried. And they go, all right, we're in. Let's do it. Not even a question. Let's do it. And um, so they talked to the the funeral company and, and the graveyard, the cemetery, and they said, yep, here, let's do it. So on February 22nd, which is just about six weeks after he has been buried. So six okay. weeks down there. Six feet. <clears throat> yeah. They exhume his body. They uh, take the uniform off. Mm -hmm. And I actually looked at it wasn't in the book here. But when I was doing my research and the secondary article, the Altoona, um, that says they burned his uniform. So they took it off and they burned that bad boy. Yeah. Okay. And well, I mean, fire is a good cleanser for it that is. kind of stuff. So. That wasn't mentioned in Mark Nesbitt's book, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not, so I'm not really sure why he skipped that. Because all it says here is uniform was removed and the body was sprinkled with salt before being wrapped in sheets. So, yeah, his the uniform is burned, according to the secondary article. Yeah. Um, and then he is salted you know yeah. they, they use uh, whole, i want to say holy sauce but they use like you know, it's just salt salt yeah. to salt so yeah. like it's a good divider between yeah the, it's a purifier the supernatural and then the natural <laughs> supernatural got it right good tv show um and then they wrap him up in sheets put him back in his box bury him again and guess what the curse is broken Ta -da! To, yes uh so you know rosella never saw reuben again while she's alive yeah. <laughs> the pounding, stomping. I, I would never face. want to see him again, personally. <laughs> no, you stay over there. This is my section of heaven. You go over there. <laughs> Shoo. Um, but yeah, she was able to eat again. Her nerves felt better. She gained weight. She didn't feel listless anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was all thanks to Edward Ferguson, who had lifted the curse. And that is the curse of Reuben Rock. And usually I don't I'm not want to like believe these things. I'm, I'm always skeptical. Yeah. But it made the paper twice yeah which is and i gotta give a shout out to that mom mrs dively believing like that yeah. is awesome and none of it is outlandish enough yeah that i don't believe it you know like the conjuring movies where people are <laughs> flying around the room and you know like yeah. okay yeah sure yeah and it she was never pushed shoved she never had her hair pulled none of that ever happened mm -hmm. it was just the pounding uh, it was someone walking on the floor above her and then it was pounding on her ceiling it yeah. was some, the noises on the roof almost like he couldn't like he obviously got inside the house because you could hear the stepping in the floor yeah. above her and then he was pounding on the ceiling of her bedroom but he never attacked her Mm -hmm. Now, he glared at her angrily, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but there's also that siphoning of her life force, you know, yeah. the vitality that was taken from her. So it's just, it's weird. You know, it's interesting. You think if he could do a full bodied apparition, as you mentioned, yeah. he could obviously have inflicted pain on her, but he wanted her to suffer. Yeah. I think it's more of a psychological torment than, yeah, wear her down. than anything else. Yeah. So, yeah, real haunting, real curse. That was broken That's by a, a power doctor, right? Yeah, so shout out to Mark Nesbitt in this book. If you don't have it, people, buy it. Cursed in Pennsylvania, Stories of the Damned in the Keystone State by Mark Nesbitt and Patty A. Wilson. They do a lot of good work together. They write yeah. their books. Actually, I'll be using his stuff again and um, we do Eastern State because they have some good background information for that. Mm -hmm. So anything you want to add? Did no, you no. had to be one to add that was supposed to be funny. I, I, I did, but we'll save it for another date. Good, because yeah. the Alba Twitch, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Apple Schnitcher <laughs> was enough for me. Oh, it's and a Pennsylvania treasure <laughs> that no one knows about except for York, PA. Elysburg had their Bigfoot Festival yesterday. Uh, one of our favorite listeners, Penny, went and she got us, a, well, got me. 
an awesome present, a book, and it's signed by the author. She got and me an she, awesomer present. She got PJ an awesomer present. It is a squish, what, like a, a, a squishy, like a stress ball. A stress almost. ball, yeah. It's a, it's a Mothman stress ball. I can't wait. <laughs> I know. It's a little Mothman. So thank He's gone you, on my desk. Penny, for that. Um, we, you know, again, shout out to uh, Maggie's casket because that painting was awesome. Uh, we've made some new friends. We're going to be at Helix in the coming weeks. But yeah. my last thing I want to say is don't forget to get on Facebook and leave a comment on that picture so you can be entered giveaway. into our drawing uh, for the giveaway. Yep. You can also send us a private message, which we've received a couple of those. You can email us. You can comment on our Facebook page. If you listen on YouTube, comment oh, I'm on at, YouTube. I'm on YouTube, yeah. Uh, so please get in on that. You got we're gonna be drawing that name on Labor. I think you got some time, but Labor Day is coming up. It's coming up faster right. than yeah. you think. Yeah. So and you're gonna be busy over Labor Day. So hop on there, and get her done, son. If you have any recommendations of things you'd like us to talk about, yes, let us know. Again, come to Helix Tabletop Game Gaming, right? Helix Helix Tabletop, tabletop Gaming, Gaming Guild. That is yes, yeah, that's a mouthful. I'm gonna call it Helix <laughs> from now on. Um, and come see me. Tell me some stories. Give me your deets. Maybe I'll give you a button if I have any. I got a couple. Yeah, we have some. If you have about this, the first three people who come and tell me their cool ghost stories at Helix, get they'll a get a button. There we go. There we go. You get, like to wear, you get a limited edition button. The first person gets a car magnet. Ooh, okay. Car magnet and then two buttons. I like it. All right. So anyway, thank you everyone for listening. I want you to have a great week. Stay spooky. Stay spooky.